All right, good morning. Welcome to the first day of class. My name is Bill Mosley, and this is Computer Science B10, Python programming. Uh, hopefully you're in the right place. If not, uh, feel free to just sneak on out of here whenever you feel like it. Um, I presume there's somewhere you are intended to be if this isn't the right place. Um, today we're going to go over the syllabus and do all of the typical first day of class stuff. In addition, I'll help you uh, I'll walk you through some of the processes of how to set up your home computer with the programming environment, how to get around the website, some of those things, and we'll answer any questions you have. We'll probably take up most of the time today um, because there's a lot to do, but um, in a typical class, we'll have a portion of the class where I lecture or talk about things, and we'll have a portion of the class that's devoted to work time. Um, I do hope you stay for the work time. There's a super high correlation between students who do really well in this class and people who take advantage of that time. If you choose to leave, um, I'm not going to mark you absent or be vindictive about it or get my feelings hurt. Um, but uh, just know that, that there is a real connection between people who use that work time and people who do well in the class. So I'm going to say that up front knowing that probably about 50% of you will choose by the end of the class to bail as soon as I finish talking. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, so what is Comp B10? Comp B10 is, <clears throat> it's part of a few degree and certificate programs. Um, interestingly enough, it is not part of the computer science degree program. Uh, however, if you're considering computer science as a degree program, if you're thinking, hmm, maybe I want to try computer science as a profession, uh, it's a great place to start. If you're not familiar with coding, if you haven't grown up with a computer in front of you, if you um, aren't sure if computer science is really what you want to do, uh, this is a great place to start because it is a class that is designed for people who don't have any coding experience to start. And while our first uh, computer science course in the series that's required by the degree, that would be computer science B11, uh, is said that it's for beginners, um, I don't think it quite achieves that goal most of the time. I think people who are real beginners in that class often struggle a little bit with the, with the coding as it is presented in that class. So this class is really, really starting at square one. However, um, if you're sitting here and you have grown up around a computer and you already do some coding, uh, I can promise you that we will get to some bits of this class that are more challenging. And you are free uh, as, as much as you want uh, to push any of the assignments into more challenging territory. So whatever you want to get out of this class, you absolutely can. And while it's geared for beginners, I'm pretty confident that um, I can help you find some challenge here as well. So we will go at your pace. Um, so we're, we're really talking about two things here. Well, three things, I would say. We're talking about some of the fundamental ideas in programming, right? What is programming? How, what are some of the big ideas? What are some of the conceptual things? that you will know after this class, if you go to take a class on Java programming or C++ programming, you will see those same concepts come back again and again and again. No matter what language you choose, you will some of those programming fundamental concepts will transfer to any other programming language that you decide to pursue. Uh, we'll talk also about software development. Now, programming is writing code. Software development is sort of an art in my mind. It's creating something that does something for somebody. That sounds pretty generic, but it is the art of putting together something that is usable. And maybe if you do it really well, even fun to use. Uh, now we've probably all in this room used software that is absolutely garbage to use. I know this because you've all had to use our registration system at BC, right? Am I right? I'm going to erase that part of the video um, so I don't get fired. But uh, anyway, um, we've all used really bad software, probably qu more bad than good even, right? You use something and you're like, why is that button there? Or where am I supposed to click next? Or that's software development. 
or maybe a lack of software development. So we're gonna talk about software development in this class. The third thing that we're gonna learn about is the Python language. And I'm a huge fan of the Python language. I won't even try to pretend like I don't love it. Python is a great language for so many reasons. And it really allows you to do a lot of stuff. You can do almost anything with Python. It's easy to learn, but it's super flexible. And it, the way it's put together is designed to be fun and readable and just generally pleasurable to use. And we'll get into that um, on Thursday in the next part of the class, why, why Python is so great. But just trust me, Python's great. We're going to learn about the specifics of Python in this class as well. So maybe you're a programmer already and you just want to learn Python. We got you covered here. So this class, I'm teaching it in two different locations at two different times in person, right? So on Monday and Wednesdays, <clears throat> we have yet to meet, but Monday and Wednesdays, 1, 1 to 225 on the Panorama Campus, Business Building Room 11. Why am I telling you? Because if you're over there or you're on that side of town for a doctor's appointment or whatever, and you want to come to that class, or maybe you, you can't come on Tuesday, but you want to make up a, a class session or get some extra help, or, or you come on Tuesday and you're like, man, that was confusing. I want to hear that again in person, or I want to ask some questions, or I want that work time. You can come to the other class. I'm cool with that. There will be seats in that class. Um, and then, of course, this is this section here, Tuesday, Thursday, 9.35 to 11, Southwest Campus. And then I teach the class online. And one question that I have a lot of students ask me is, if I registered for the in-person class, and you do all these videos, you put every, every video of every lecture is online, do I really have to come to class? And the answer to that is, unfortunately, perhaps yes. Uh, you do because the state says if you register for an online class, I can't give you credit unless you, I mean, if you register for a face-to-face -face class, I can't give you credit unless you have a butt in the seat. Now, is that a, a wildly outdated idea about learning? Absolutely. But it is, it is the law, so we have to stick with it for now. Um, now, are people actively trying to change that? Yes, of, of course we are. But uh, if you register for this class, you have to come to this class. If you manage to re-register for a seat in an online class, that's fine. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. But there are benefits to coming here. And I, I say this fully uh, knowing that this video is going to be what I also give to my online students. But the advantages of being in this class in person are not insignificant. If you can come to class, you absolutely should because being here in person, being able to interact with your neighbors, with your colleagues in the class, ask them questions. Um, I encourage you when we're working on a project to get up, walk around and see how other people are doing things. And you might be like, well, that's cheating. I'm looking at other people's answers. That's not a thing in this class, okay? What I want you to see is that there are a multitude of different ways to solve any programming problem. Are, is there a best way? Yeah, sure. Do I always know what it is? No. And do I care if you always choose the best way? Absolutely not. What I want you to learn is how to put together code in creative ways that solve problems that you want to solve. And so I try to present you with projects that are worthwhile and are worth solving and I give you a lot of freedom in how you want to solve those things. If I want you to do something specific in pursuit of solving a problem or working on a project in this class, I will say so in the project description. There will be a section called limitations and constraints. And I'll say, I want you to make sure that you're doing this, this, and this. And the reason I put those additional constraints on the project isn't to make it harder on you, but to make sure that you're learning the things that you need to learn. That's pretty much it. But out there in the real world, in the wild, you can literally solve a problem any way you want. That's the beauty of programming. And that's why programming is ultimately as creative as painting or drawing or music or anything else. It's really taking all of these little pieces and putting together something creative with it. So before we jump into the syllabus, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me, uh, just so you kind of get a feel for who I am and what I'm about. Uh, I'll start with the personal side of things. Um, this is my family. I know it's a kind of a smallish picture, and it's also 
now a couple of years old. Um, man, I should have put a picture of my grandson on there. What am I even thinking? Um, <clears throat> this is my family. These are all my kids and my wife. And um, that's my oldest daughter that's uh, at her wedding. And my wife is in the pink there. Um, you can see we've got a lot of different colors in our family. We've got a lot of different people. And there's quite a few of us. I have seven kids. Five of my kids are adopted. Uh, two, of, two of my kids are, the oldest two kids are biological kids. And <clears throat> I grew up an only child with a single mom who didn't attend college. So like the idea of, I was a latchkey kid, which I, if, maybe you don't even know what that means. But basically I had my house key on a string around my neck every day at school. I'd walk home starting in second grade, let myself in the house and like tried to take care of myself till my mom got home from work. Cause that's just the way it was. So I didn't have any siblings. I didn't know what was going on. When my kids started fighting with their siblings, I'm like, I looked at my wife and I'm like, what are they doing? Cause I didn't understand why siblings do that to each other. Um, but I figured it out eventually. And uh, it's really cool. Uh, my youngest son is adopted from Haiti, uh, which is a country where we've done a lot of work, a lot of volunteer work. Uh, it's an absolute mess right now. That poor country um, is just overrun by gangs to the point where you can't even land a plane in the airport now. They they shut down the airport after planes were being shot at. So it's it's pretty scary place right now, and we were lucky to get him out in time. Uh, another thing about my family is that we are all competitive swimmers. And the bride here is this one right here. This is at national championships. This is a picture of her at Olympic trials in 2016. She was pretty good. Uh, she got a full ride to USC and then went to ten transferred to Tennessee on another full ride. Uh, sprint freestyler. I uh, was in a, in the lane at Olympic trials next to a, a girl named Katie Ledecky. Maybe you've heard of her. Uh, Katie Le Ledecky smoked her, but <laughs> but that's a different story. Uh, but just being at trials is a pretty big accomplishment, right? So I uh, didn't make the Olympic team, but all of my kids have swam. This is my son. He now works for Microsoft. This is my other son. He's still at CSUB. Um, and these are my two girls. And this is, this is my grandfather with his swimmers. Uh, he was a swim coach at BC for 35 years. So I grew up on BC's campus. I love BC. Um, I plan to retire from BC, but not anytime soon. But uh, I grew up just around swimming and around that. So uh, swimming is just kind of part of our family culture. I was at a swim meet last weekend, and uh, we, we will all swim probably through college. So the professional side, uh, I was a BC student myself, and then I went to Fresno Pacific University, got my master's at Pepperdine, and a PhD at University of Nebraska. Yes, it was a long time in school. In fact, um, I started, of course, when I was 18 in college, and when I finished, I had five kids, so it took a while. I'm in my 27th year here at BC, um, and I also taught for Pepperdine University uh, for 21 years. This is what it looks like when the surrounding area is not burning, uh, which is <laughs> terrible. Um, so uh, I've taught in a virtual world. I've taught in World of Warcraft. In fact, this is a group of students outside Northshire Abbey uh, talking about learning theory. Uh, the group of my Pepperdine students. I've taught classes in Minecraft using Legos and even uh, sewable circuits. So this is a computer right here, and this is a pillow, and all of these threads are actually wires. So the pillow, when you squeeze it, lights up. Um, so we taught programming to graduates, graduate students in education using all of those different things. Uh, I like video games. Video games are what we got me into programming way back in the early day. I loved playing games and I immediately thought, yeah, I want to make one of those. So I made my computer, um, I made my parents buy me a computer, uh, learned basic programming and uh, have enjoyed making games and writing programs uh, most of my life. 